Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how you can uh, perform the factor analysis. So factor analysis, I think this, that is very useful when you want to make a subscales. So um, the scale variables can have the different subscales uh, to measure the uh, phenomenon. So uh, for instance, the survey questions can be regrouped by the different subscales. So one subscale uh, can have the um, uh, specific uh, character that is distinguished from other subscales. So uh, here you can see in the data, you have the from the question one and the question 21, and they measure some different factors. And then that is all together can measure the one phenomenon. So for instance, it can be a depression but depression can have different features and that can be measured by different subscales. For instance, a depression uh, by the uh, anxiety or kind of uh, violence or another, uh, just I'm saying the uh, examples. So it's kind of different subscales that can report all over uh, the uh, overall, in fact, the uh, depression. So that is the case. Okay, today, so in SPSS, how you can conduct the factor analysis with those different questions. Here, you have a question one until question 21. So the first one is assumption part. We will uh, find the, uh, if uh, this, uh, this data uh, is proper to conduct the factor analysis. So for that, you can go to the analyze and then dimension reduction factor. And then uh, you can, uh, I already put the uh, 21 items here. So you can uh, first uh, check the uh, descriptives and then you can check the, uh, all the select pairs. Okay. And then uh, extraction. Uh, here you will check the correlation and then we need the based on uh, uh, Again, that value uh, for the moment we don't uh, uh, touch this. This is for the uh, step two. In the step one about the assumption part, we need the um, uh, unrotated factor solution and then script plot to know how many factors we need. So that is, and then rotation. We don't rotate for the moment, so it's none. And then uh, we can check out this. So for the moment, the method is none. Continue. Uh, and then, OK. So uh, here you can see the descriptive statistics report the mean and standard deviation. This is not really very important. Just you can see the, how many people responded. So that was 20, 233. And then in the correlation uh, matrix table, there are a lot of items are correlated. So we will see here if there is a multicollinearity problem. To check that, you don't have to see the, all these numbers. Just you can see in the end of the table, determinant. So if that is uh, uh, greater than 0 0.0001, and then uh, there is no multicollinearity problem. So this one is 2.720. So uh, you can uh, proceed with the factor analysis without multicollinearity problem. And also in the uh, this KMO test, it shows that it's uh, over than 0 0.7 means that uh, you have a uh, sampling adequacy is satisfied, so you don't need to worry about the, the sampling uh, size. Uh, and then a bottled test sparsity that shows that it's uh, less than 0 0.001, so all of them are very much, uh, very much correlated. So the sparsity means they're not correlated. But that is the significant level. This means that it's, it's very much correlated. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, assumption part. And then we can finally find how many factors can be extracted from the, these 21 items. There are three uh, factors. So uh, SPSS shows that until how many factors can be effective and then valuable. So that is until three. And now you can also check in the script plot that is elbow line is four, but I think the uh, that is showing that uh, until three factors, that is over than one, 
So you will consider the one to three factors will be extracted from the, this uh, survey. Okay, so this is the uh, assumption part. And now we can proceed with the step two with the real the factor analysis. So analyze and then uh, dimension reduction factor. And now you can go to the all this and check the assumption part. We already saw this was so satisfied. And then extraction. Uh, you don't. We don't need to this. And then now it affects the numbers of factors as three. Okay, and continue. Rotation now we will use the very max. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is memorization uh, and continue. And now in the options, you can put uh, this absolute value below 0 0.30 will be eliminated. So we don't need to worry about the. Uh, too many uh, correlation coefficient. We will get only uh, over than 0 0.30. Continue and then OK. So here you can see that uh, there are three component factors. And then they show that which uh, question uh, belongs to the factor 1. So the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Oh, oh, sorry, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, so number one, question one, number seven, number eight, etc. So you can find the uh, or uh, which uh, survey question belongs to the factor one. Factor two is the same thing, and then factor three also same thing. There is no um, uh, the, the no question uh, belongs to the two factors at the same time. If that happens, you will see the higher value for the that factor. For instance, it's a factor one will be let's assume point to point to four zero zero, and then now it's a factor three is point to seven seven three. In this case, this question will belong to the factor three, not factor one. By the by that way, but fortunately we don't have this problem in this uh, analysis. So everything is only one uh, belongs to the one uh, factor. So it's very easy to find. And also when there is a minus negative point, then uh, negative sign, that means that uh, we have to recode that question because that is negatively uh, coded. So we will proceed with that. But there is no uh, minus value here. So everything is uh, no need to be recorded. And we can see the, the variances. So factor one, uh, that group is uh, uh, br uh, brings the 24% uh, percent of variances for this scale. And then uh, uh, subscale two is 23.207%. Uh, and then uh, uh, the factor three, that will bring the about the uh, twenty percent. So they are very highly uh, reporting the uh, these three subscales for this uh, overall uh, scale value, uh, variable. Okay, so this is the um, how you can uh, abstract the uh, how you can extract the uh, three different factors from the factor analysis, and they become the three subscales. Now, just I want to show you one. Uh, the last thing you have to do is that about the Kronbach Arpeggio reliability test. So the, if you you uh, extracted the um, factor, you can check the uh, factor one with the these different items how they are uh, reliable each other. So that is a Kronbach Alpha. So for that, you can go to the analyze and then uh, scale and the reliability test. And then you can put the all the relevant items that is uh, uh, extracted by the factor analysis. I just put the here all factor one um, items. And then you can go to statistics. And then the item scale, scale item deleted, and the correlations. And then continue, and then OK. So that generates the uh, you are reliably Kronbach Alpha. That is a uh, point. 931 that is very very much correlated so all items are uh, correlated and you can see here um chromebook alpha item deleted this means that if you delete this item that will be the chromebook alpha but any chromebook alpha here is greater than uh 0 0.931 so you don't have to delete any item they are just that is the way you can obtain the best reliability 
Okay, so this is about a factor analysis and I, ho I hope this can be helpful for you. Thank you.